move with you, so it's yeah. obvious it's not a hat. It's not a hat. It's not yeah. a hat. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> hey, we got people joining us now, so we are, looks like we're live. Good morning, everybody. Happy December 17th to you. It's uh, the week before Christmas. I'm all through the house. Creatures are stirring. And my cat brought me a mouse this morning in the garage. So that was fun. Our cats have been bringing more like these voles or moles or something that they're like, I don't know if they're slower, my, slower than mice. Um, oh, moles are really slow when they come out of the ground. Yeah, I'm thinking that's why my cats get them because they're probably, you know, still. They're still well, that's good. Then they yeah. won't tear up your lawn next summer or spring. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, good morning, everybody. Today is uh, the, on the diabetes reversal webinar. I am your host, Joe Barton, as always, and also my sidekick here who has all the answers to all of you, any of your questions you may have. In yeah. Life yeah, life Robin the boy wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Scott Saunders. All right. So yeah. um, today, let me quick read the disclaimer. Basically, uh, Dr. Saunders is not your doctor and not giving you personal <laughs> advice. So don't take it uh, personally. Seek your own pr professional health care uh, provider if you have any questions. We are here for informational purposes only, but this information is the best in the world, right? All right. You betcha. So uh, welcome everyone. If you want to tell us hello in the chat, we would love to hear where you're from um, and tell us what you had for breakfast, if anything, including liquids like coffee or tea or Diet Coke or orange juice or an orange Julius possibly. So Dr. Saunders, have you had anything yet today? Uh, I have soup, uh, turkey soup. We had a, a a Christmas party and everybody was over and we had a turkey. And then I took, after I I uh, took all the meat off the turkey, I put the bones in a, a pot and boiled it up and made this really rich, great soup. It's really, mm -hmm. it sticks with me. And I figured since it's really cold out today that I'm going to eat that. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, we got, uh, you said you got frost there in Southern California, which is, doesn't happen very often, huh? Yeah. Well, it happens every year, but not not uh, not every day. <laughs> yeah, we got a nice frost in our trees today as well. So, all right, I've got one person that shared what they're having. Oh, here comes another one. So, thanks for sharing, everyone. Let's get some activity going today in the chat. And uh, so, so today, this is our final webinar of 2019. The end of the year, as we know it, is is coming to an end here. So, uh, 2020 will be here uh, very soon. So we're taking a break for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, and then we'll, we'll be back on January 7th. So uh, very good stuff. All right. We had uh, a couple people share what they're having. One's having coffee and grapefruit juice, another with a glass of no sugar added Nesquik with fat-free milk. So there we go. That sounds delicious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that does <not> sound delicious. <laughs> Brings me back to my childhood and that the uh, the Nesquik bunny, right? Yeah, if I, but if I'm gonna drink milk, it's gonna be full of fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I rarely drink it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a question. Um, what is what is better for you, fat-free milk or whole milk, or somewhere? Oh, that's that's really interesting. I, I've been doing a little bit of research on this um, for for somebody else. Um, and the reaction to milk, some people think that when they react to milk, it's lactose, which is the, you know, I'm lactose intolerant um, kind of thing. Uh, and that is the sugar in milk. Um, and the fat in milk, uh, when they homogenize the milk, they whip it up and they break down the fat globules so they're smaller. And then they put in an emulsifier. And this is really interesting thing about homogenized milk having with with the, the fat in it it has uh, the emulsifier is absorbed into your body but you can't process it so um, over time it can become toxic you know some people will react to it because they can't get rid of it there's no mechanism for the body to break down this emulsifier and and you know if you didn't absorb it it wouldn't be an issue but the fact that we absorb it mm -hmm. it is it can become an issue so um 
so the f the emulsifier in the milk is really uh, homogenized milk is really the problem, not mm. the not the uh, not not the fat itself. And then um, you know uh, everybody says that oh, low fat milk is better, uh, or or non non fat milk. But I think um, we kind of have changed. We're starting to change the look of that and say, look, fat is actually good for you. Uh, we need fat. There are mm -hmm. essential fats. There are fats we can't live without. Um, there's no sugar we can't live without. I mean, you could you could live your whole life uh, without eating sugar. Um, well, it, that would be hard to do. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> uh, but there's no essential carbohydrates that you absolutely have to have. We can make everything we need, mm. uh, including glucose. We can make out of protein. So that... Um, Anyway, so I always drink the fat in the milk because I like my milk really rich. Some people drink only fat, like they drink cream, like heavy whipping cream on their whatever cereal or Nesquik with heavy whipping cream. But yeah. I don't go that far. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that is something that we've talked about in the past, that fat, like the whole low fat craze of the, I don't remember when that started, 70s? 70s, yeah. 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 Uh, there was some sort of research about, I don't know, and I think some of it was funded by the sugar industry, <clears throat> because when you take the fat out, you lose flavor, and so you have to add sugar to get more flavor, and so that's uh, that's a big reason why so many of our foods have increased in in sugar because you lose the flavor. But if you have that high fat, uh, it's it's satiating, so it makes you feel full, it makes you feel satisfied, uh, and you have less sugar. So, yeah. I, I have whole milk when, when I do have it. So, All right, a couple other things. Two boiled eggs with a dab of butter on each half and two slices of uncurled bacon, three cups of black coffee. And we got someone else with, uh, let's see, half, half an apple, half an orange, and seven almonds. Uh, someone has coconut milk out of the can with this coffee. All right. Oh, wait, that's her. That's Leslie. Yeah, hey, all right. <laughs> <laughs> It just said less on there, so. Uh, let's see, first thing in the morning, I took three glasses of water after half an hour, I took two tablespoons of olive oil. All right, all right. getting some good healthy fats in you. And let's see, um, suggestion from Skip. Good morning, Skip. Uh, suggest you add blood sugar to questions on the 610 reset. I might need you to clarify that, uh, Skip. Not sure what you mean by that. Um, adding I think I think I think he knows. Uh, I think I know what it means when um, when you're doing the oh, uh, the, the six in ten. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Check your blood sugar. Like yeah. check your blood sugar uh, before and after your fast, for example. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a great suggestion. Got it. Yeah. And Leslie, we got to get you a, a blood sugar monitor so we can get you pricking your fingers every morning, leading us to ten reset, right? She, yeah. she, <laughs> she said yes. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, guys, uh, this is Q&A day, so feel free to ask your questions. Like, we don't have a whole lot prepared other than we just want to help, help you guys. So what are some areas that you're getting stuck in uh, in the diabetes reversal plan? Um, how can we help you today? How can Dr. Saunders help you? You've got a, one of the world's leading metabolic uh, experts uh, right here available and willing to answer your questions. So here we go. Question from Alan. What is the role of caffeine in diabetes? Does it stimulate appetite and does it increase blood sugar? Ah, that's very interesting. Um, and at um, so the answer is always qualified in that kind of case. It depends. It depends on the individual. Some people tolerate caffeine really well. In fact, when caffeine is researched, there is no disease state that is uh, specifically related to or correlated with caffeine intake. Uh, and so if people tolerate caffeine, that's fine. So some people get really nervous and they get jittery and they and they say, I can't take caffeine because uh, I can't sleep at night or, or, or it makes me nervous or jittery. Um, so some people just don't tolerate uh, caffeine and that's fine. And those kind of people in diabetes will tend to have higher blood sugars because it stimulates the adrenal hormones 
and the higher adrenal hormones will make them more resistant to insulin so they can't bring sugar into their cells. The sugar, the blood sugar will tend to be higher. So, uh, so in some cases, caffeine is an issue. And I have told people to get off of, of caffeine uh, who have that issue. Um, but the only way to know is to test yourself and, uh, and try uh, with caffeine over a period of time, let's say a week or two, you're testing your blood sugar regularly and then go off caffeine entirely uh, for a week or two and, and check your blood sugar and see how it affects you. Because some people, it won't affect them at all. And some people will be, you know, significantly affected. Yeah. Yeah, I used to be really jittery from caffeine. And uh, I used to also like, I remember one time I was in church and I went to put my arm around my wife and uh, I basically got stuck. Like my back just went out. I'm like, Oh no, can't move. Like my back is out. And I went to the chiropractor and he's like, do you drink a lot of caffeine? I'm like, Oh, I don't know. Maybe six or seven Mountain Dews a day. It's like, Oh yeah, that might be a problem. So that was back when I was, you know, young and, didn't know a whole lot about health. So I stopped drinking Mountain Dew and uh, got a lot better. But the other thing that helped my back pain, just as a quick aside, is working out and working out your muscles, like just doing, you know, a couple times a week uh, exercise. And that's completely gotten, gotten rid of any back pain I've ever had. So keep those muscles strong. So. Okay, let's see. We got more questions coming in. How do I find a local doctor who won't prescribe all sorts of medications instead of good advice on diet? Oh, good question. Okay, so uh, it's not that hard. If you go online and just locally look for a couple of keywords, and that would be uh, integrative medicine. Uh, and so you may get naturopathic doctors uh, and they won't prescribe uh, medications as a rule. Some do. Um, you, you might get, uh, in some cases, you'll get um, chiropractors or others that don't prescribe medications. And, and if that's fine with you, then that works too. But if you need a medical doctor for whatever other reasons, because you're on medicine and need uh, help getting off of them or something, um, then, then, uh, if if it does you don't come up with like integrative medicine doesn't come up with the medical doctor that you want then call the the numbers that you do have the the naturopathic doctors the chiropractors or acupuncturists or whoever is doing the integrative medicine and say okay is there a, a medical doctor nearby that uh, that does this that does integrative uh, type of of work. And the other keyword would be functional medicine. Some some doctors will be under the keyword functional, um, and the the functional medicine is to restore function. Integrative is where you're taking a lot of different types of of modalities of healing and putting them together. And not everybody does that. Some just do uh, restoring function. Uh, we have had a little bit of an audio issue there, it sounds like. Tailed off at the very end there. Try again. Or testing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. We're good. We just lost, didn't hear a couple words at the end. Okay. Yeah. Integrative medicine and functional medicine, that's, that's a great way to find doctors. Um, Grace, let us know if that was helpful, if you have any other follow-up questions with that. So Skip has a question. Why does diabetes develop over time and not disappear after fat is controlled? Can you hear us, Scott? I'm sorry, say that again. Oh, uh, why does diabetes develop over time and not disappear after fat is controlled? Um... Can you hear us okay? Why does diabetes develop over time and not disappear? Um, um, because it's, it's, it's the diabetes in type two diabetes is insulin resistance. Uh, and the fat has some effect on that because fat makes certain hormones, uh, adiponectin and leptin, um, that, that have some control over that. But the primary problem is the pancreas and the pancreas has this, uh, making excessive insulin, uh, problem. And, uh, and so the resistance to insulin 
has to change completely before that uh, the, the fat is able to be used. So uh, even if you lose some fat, um, then you haven't switched necessarily to a full fat burning metabolism, which is why like on the first, uh, uh, the first um, um, phase one of the reversal, diabetes reversal program, um, we do the, it's, it's uh, the, it has, has to be enough time for us to, uh, uh, to, to change to fat burning metabolism. That's what it is. Dang. Looks like it's pinning my video and when you're talking for some reason. I don't know, Leslie, if you can make the settings so that the so people can see everybody instead of just me when he's talking. It sounds like we're having a little bit of uh audio issues. I mean I could hear him, but for whatever reason it wasn't transferring over. So let me know if that works. I see a yellow box around my video. People don't want to look at me when he's talking, so. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> hey, here's a good question from Henry. Scott, can you still hear us? Or I see a mute button, so. Hmm. Hang in there, everyone. We were just kind of dealing with some um, technical difficulties here. So I think Scott's probably getting on another way here so we'll be back here and or we'll be with you in a second um let me just look at a couple things here um so i'll take this time to do a little plug so this webinar is um something that we've been doing for several months now and plan to continue to do into 2020 and uh if you don't already know uh, bartonwebinar.com is kind of our home base for this and so we link to our the supplements that we offer and our other products so if you go to bartonwebinar.com that that has the link to register for this call if you're not already registered you can um, also have a link there's a link there to our youtube page and we have all of our webinars are recorded on youtube and so if you want to go there you can watch the archives and get all sorts of uh, different questions answered from there and uh, like I mentioned, we have uh, our supplements. Cinechroma is our number one blood sugar control product. We have Nervala, which is for nerve pain, and neuropathy. This works great. It's got alpha lipoic acid in it and vitamin D, uh, benfotiamine. Then we have uh, a standard inflammation fighter, the turmeric BP. This has, uh, this has organic turmeric powder and turmeric root extract and uh, bioperine black pepper extract. So the black pepper actually helps absorb turmeric uh, 20 times more than standard turmeric. So you, if you're taking turmeric, make sure you have the black pepper in there. And then our other, our fourth supplement in, uh, is this healthy gut support. And this is a prebiotic, a probiotic, and a digestive enzyme. Um, this helps just to get your, uh, your gut health and your digestive system working well and that's very important in so many ways so uh that's all linked on bartonwebinar.com all right dr saunders looks like you're back i'm back i'm back <laughs> okay great uh, i just did a little commercial message while you're situating me, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right henry has a great question about the banana is a banana good for type 2 diabetes Okay, um, the answer is always going to be qualified. There, there's a there's a, a yes and a no. Um, so bananas are pretty high in carbohydrates. So they they're starchy. They're made into sugar pretty quickly. They're um, kind of rapidly absorbed. They don't have a lot of fiber. So uh, bananas. On if you were going to eat a banana, then that's all the carbs you can have for a whole day. Um, <clears throat> on on um, phase one of the program, um, but you can incorporate bananas in if you really like bananas. Ban bananas are the number one fruit sold in the United States, hmm. and uh, they uh, they have uh, they're healthy uh, in many ways. Everybody says you know potassium, but 
uh, yeah, ounce for ounce, they have uh, more potassium than uh, than a lot of other fruits and vegetables. But you know what? Beans are really high in potassium, and so you don't have to eat bananas to get potassium. <clears throat> Every fruit and vegetable has potassium. So, uh, so if you like bananas, you can incorporate them in. Uh, but I would recommend if you're doing phase one of the program, avoid them completely just because they're pretty high in starch and sugar. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then as you're adding them in, you're checking your blood sugar and you see if, oh gosh, every time I eat a banana, I get my blood sugar goes way up, then that wouldn't be a good idea. But you know, if you occasionally eat bananas, it's not going to be an issue. There's a difference between uh, the green bananas and fully ripe bananas too. The sugar content goes up the more ripe they are. So if you eat like more green bananas, uh, which some people like, I actually kind of like green bananas, th there's less sugar in them, right? So if you're craving yeah. a banana, go for a green one. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, the other thing, if you want to get the fiber with the banana, just eat the peel. <laughs> right? That, that does not sound appetizing. <laughs> uh, all right, so Skip has a follow-up question. He had asked uh, about, you know, why diabetes develops over time and doesn't disappear after fat is controlled. So follow-up is, are you saying diabetes is a permanent problem? Oh, well, yeah, because, because people who have the tendency to diabetes have the tendency to diabetes. Uh, some people can eat a very high carbohydrate diet and not get diabetes. And some people eat moderate carbohydrates and still get diabetes. And so, you know, we're talking about lifestyle uh, uh, causing diabetes, but that's not really the case, really. Um, we have a genetic predisposition to it in some way, and and our uh, our um, what do they call it epigenetics uh, b uh, by our lifestyle is what our epigenetics uh, is uh, adding in all of that uh, that carbohydrate over time uh, can bring us to the to to have diabetes. So. If, if you have completely controlled your diabetes, your fat level's down, uh, you're, you're not insulin resistant, and by all the tests, uh, biochemical tests and any test, you do not have diabetes, then you do not have diabetes, but you still have the tendency to get it. And if you were to uh, go back to your, your, um, your um, bad ways like a dog returns to his vomit, uh, you would, you would uh, end up with diabetes again. So it's not that you know you cure it. You don't cure it. That's why we we reverse diabetes. We don't cure it because you, yes, you always have the tendency. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Pam has a good question about a healthy gut that I mentioned in the commercial. And is, <clears throat> are we better off taking two healthy gut in the morning or one in the morning and one at night? Well. Uh, it depends. <laughs> it's always my answer is always it depends. Okay, so healthy gut has prebiotics and probiotics, but it also has enzymes, and some people need those digestive enzymes to uh, fully break down their their food because um, over time the pancreas is pooped out. It's not making uh, the enzymes like it used to. Uh, the same like the pancreas is pooped out and not making insulin like it used to. You know, there's, there's uh, these issues come up. And so if you need the enzymes, then I often tell people uh, to start out with one with every meal, take healthy gut support with each meal, because that way you digest the food each time. And then you can try uh, cutting it back to uh, one, one with breakfast, one with dinner, and then uh, cut back to just one in the morning. Um, so it depends on the need. Okay. Good, good. All right. So we've got an observation from Patrick, which leads to a question. Uh, last night, my bathroom nightlight burnt out. It also lit up my bedroom moderately. I woke I up. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up feeling more rested. Coincidence? Huh. Okay. Um, that's n not necessarily a coincidence. In fact, research has shown that uh, having the lights out, having a very dark room, 
uh, helps some people that are very sensitive to light and their pineal gland won't make melatonin and they don't sleep as well even when their eyes are closed if there's light outside or light around them in their uh, ambient light. Um, you know what? Some people sleep fine and they make great melatonin in spite of the light, but some people are so sensitive to light that they will, um, their, their pineal gland won't make melatonin and they won't sleep very well. So it's likely that you need a very dark room to sleep well. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I would try that again and see if you keep having uh, better sleep. So I've heard... There was, the, there was some evidence that they, that some people couldn't make melatonin. You know those little, um, those little LED indicators on the computer that tells you it's plugged in or on yeah. or whatever? Even though the screen's totally off, you have that little LED there. Um, if it was a blue one or a green one, um, then they, they didn't make melatonin. If it was a red one, they did. So it was kind of a, a, a funny thing. But yeah, even those little indicators can make a difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Another question. This is from Bram. Hi, Bram. Um, how do you know if you have issues with your enzymes to warrant taking a supplement? Mm. Um, well, first of all, you have digestive issues, uh, uh, maldigestion, uh, malabsorption, uh, diarrhea, constipation, uh, acid reflux. Um, when, when you find that gosh, I ate five hours ago and I, I'm still getting this acid reflux. Um, uh, having those kinds of things, you may not be digesting your food very well. I've had people tell me, you know, the, the food goes in one, one end, it comes out the other end whole and uh, it does, isn't digested at all and they can tell. Um, so uh, in some cases, that, uh, that, that's an indicator. Um, and then if you have those digestive issues and you take enzymes and you go, wow, what a relief, that kind of fixed everything, um, then, then the, your temporary solution is to take enzymes. But that's not the permanent solution. The permanent solution is to get your pancreas to make the enzymes so that you can digest everything properly. Um, because the pancreas puts out enzymes according to need. And if it's not doing that, then uh, um, then things need to be changed so that it can. And uh, the way to do that, the 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 simple, uh, I'll give you the short version of more the long term solution is if you're having digestive issues like that, and the enzymes really help, you stay on the enzymes while you change your diet. So you have a very high uh, a diet high in uh, more raw foods because the raw foods contain enzymes as well. And then at the same time, you space out your meals more. So you leave five hours between meals or more, five hours or more between meals and no snacks in between so that your stomach gets a chance to empty and your pancreas has a chance to reset. Mm, that's good. Pancreas reset. <laughs> <laughs> Can be our, our next competition. Who can get their pancreas to reset most frequently or, or the best? I've been I've been working on it for years. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting good at it. <laughs> okay, we've got a question from Shamela. Uh, I think I have a digestive problem. I just drink uh, gamely water at night, but my sugar is not going down. Uh, only I am very irregular in my exercise. I'm not sure what gamely water is. You know what that is? Well, I don't know either. But um, if it's just water, in other words, if it's water that doesn't have any any uh, flavorings or sugars mm -hmm. or whatever in it, then um, then often what happens when when there's insulin resistance, the sugar kind of just stays a little bit elevated all the time. It doesn't it doesn't come down to any normal range, and um, the uh, the insulin resistance uh, prevents you from getting sugar down into the normal range, and the and the when it does go down a little bit, the uh, the pancreas puts out glucagon, which tells the liver to make more sugar. So uh, you don't know what's happening through the night, but very often people with high insulin through the night 
their blood sugar will drop low and they won't know it. Sometimes people wake up because of low blood sugar. And they can't get back to sleep because you know they release uh, the adrenaline uh, because of that. But also the pancreas puts out uh, glucagon that tells the liver to make more sugar. So then they check their blood sugar and it's super high. And they're going, gosh, I haven't eaten anything in 12 hours and my blood sugar is high. And that's because they're turning their glycogen and, and protein into sugar. And that's, that's a natural thing for the body to do when it drops low. Hmm. That reminds me of something Leslie showed me last week. Um, Dave Asprey from Bulletproof had, was wearing something on his arm underneath like his, on his tricep. Uh, it was like a 24 seven blood sugar monitor. It looked like a little white patch, uh, but he actually, it's got a needle in it and it sticks it in there. And then when you take your phone with an app over it, you can check your blood sugar at any time by waving your phone over the patch and I think it costs like 40 or $50 per patch and you can wear it for two weeks. But have you ever had anyone uh, use one of those before? Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not even familiar. I didn't even know you could do that. I knew there were some implantable monitors and there's now an implantable pancreas where they can uh, replace the pancreas essentially by, you have to fill up the well with insulin periodically. But um, no, that's that's really interesting that uh, an app on your phone could do that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I'm gonna look into that <clears throat> uh, over the holidays here and see if that's something, uh, if people would be interested in something like that. Why don't we get a little feedback from you guys? Um, would you be interested in, in wearing a little patch? And, and apparently, like when you stick it on your arm, you don't even feel the poke at all. Like you just, you just pop it on there. And then it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't hurt at all. And so no more finger pokes uh, constantly. You can just do that, replace it twice, twice a month. And, uh, you know, is that something that you would be interested in? And it would probably cost about, like I said, I think it's around $50 per patch. So it'd be like $100 a month. That'd be pretty, pretty expensive. But you would have like 24-7 blood sugar monitoring, monitoring, which I think, like, even if you did it for a month, it'd probably give you a lot of like data to just to process and realize like, yeah, my blood sugars are all over the place and um, in that. So I don't know. Let us know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. So, um, so a question from Grace, is it necessary to che check your sugar? And if so, when, how often per day, what time of day? Oh, um, no, it isn't necessary. Um, in fact, one of the problems of, of diabetes treatment is that we use blood sugar uh, as a monitor because blood sugar doesn't really help us. Uh, when it's high, that's fine. But you know, before people even get high blood sugar, they already, if with type two diabetes, they can already have kidney failure and neuropathy. Uh, their, their heart uh, could already be damaged. So they could already have a lot of of, of signs and symptoms of the disease before the blood sugar ever goes up. So the blood sugar is not a great way to, uh, to monitor your, uh, your, your diabetes. Um, insulin might be a better way uh, over time, but uh, really uh, keeping, uh, it, it isn't necessary to check your blood sugar. That's, that's really the bottom line. That you, if you keep your weight down, uh, and check your blood sugar or hemoglobin A1C periodically and your insulin periodically, um, that would be enough. If like every three months, six months you did that, that would be really good. Yeah, I think that device that I was talking about is more for people that are just like curious and kind of want to, you know, get into biohacking and stuff like that. That's what Dave Asprey is, is into. He, he's like, you know, he's tested, you know, millions of dollars worth of different gadgets and devices and different things to to hack his optimal health or whatever so yeah <clears throat> um, bram has a question if there is a pancreatic support supplement that is specific for the pancreatic reset um well actually <laughs> the enzymes uh, enzymes are the pancreatic support supplement um, that that really is and and so that's why you continue taking the digestive enzymes as you're doing the the um, spacing out your meals more and uh, having an empty stomach allows both your stomach and your pancreas to reset 
And so that there isn't anything uh, more that has to be done than that, particularly. Uh, just to the, the reason for the digestive enzymes is really, we call it support for the pancreas, but it's really just so you can digest your food when your pancreas isn't making all the enzymes. That's all. So you, you can digest. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what's going on when you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you're wide awake? Oh, um, several <laughs> things. Uh, probably that, that comes up in diabetes, it often comes up with low blood sugar. Uh, insulin is high. Insulin tells the body to, to, to bring the sugar out of the, uh, out of the blood into the cells and the stomach gets empty at night. And by three o'clock in the morning, you don't have any more, you're not absorbing any more sugar from your intestines. And so now, uh, now you have uh, no more absorption, but your insulin is still high and it's still telling the cells to suck the sugar out of the blood. So the blood sugar drops low. And, uh, and then you release a bunch of adrenaline and then you wake up and you're going like, I can't even get back to sleep because I'm not even tired anymore. Mm -hmm. um, because those, the stress hormones, uh, it's stressful to get low blood sugar. So that, that's one reason. And that's not that uncommon actually, especially in pre-diabetes or, or type two diabetes. Um, there are, there are, of course, many other reasons. Uh, the circadian rhythm, some people have their uh, adrenal glands put out uh, the cortisol, which would normally be released around five or six o'clock in the morning is sometimes released after they finish the deep sleep by two, between two and three. And so, uh, so then they release their cortisol uh, early. Um, and it's uh, a hormone balance thing very often, but sometimes it's a stress thing. I, I remember when I had, uh, I was going through a really stressful time. I had a lawsuit and all this other stuff going on. And, uh, and I, I just, you know, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I would be wide awake and I'd lay there for a while going, this is really boring. So um, I ended up getting up and I wrote a book <laughs> and then I published I published the book, and by the end of that time, uh, I was I started sleeping better, uh, and so I did. I wasn't getting up that early, but I still I still get up around four or five o'clock in the morning. Was that the paradox book? Yeah, paradox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so I think we may have someone here that I want to ask follow up questions to because you may have discovered the fountain of youth. Uh, Timothy says the Libre monitor, monitor L I B R E is the best thing I've come across in my 220 years of diabetes. Highly recommend. It might have been a typo of the 220 years, but if not, like I want to know what Timothy's doing to live that long. <laughs> With diabetes. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm guessing it's 20 years. So the Libre monitor, are you familiar with that at all? No. No, I, I'm not. I don't. I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, we can Google it, I suppose. But <clears throat> yeah, it's always good to hear uh, to know what uh, which devices work well. Yeah. Thanks for Timothy and just joking with you there on the 220 years. Uh, I'm assuming you're not not that old. So, uh, all right. Patrick uh, has a uh, something to share that uh, also leads to a question. So he's got a totally unscientific rule of thumb he's been using. If, if he drinks one sugar-free soda, he drinks three glasses of water to flush off or to flush or offset what other, whatever toxins are in the soda. I realize the goal is to not drink the diet soda to begin with, but do you have any feelings about the water flush? Well, I, I, I don't know. Gosh, I don't. I don't know any research on that. I don't know any. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's some evidence that uh, a diet soda causes people to gain more weight than uh, than regular soda. Um, but as far as flushing it out, um, I don't know. In the case of diabetes, the 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 problem with the diet soda is often the sweet taste, the taste of sweet can cause people to um, release insulin. And that's where the problem is, insulin resistance. So 
so uh, I, I don't know the, the flushing it out with water. Now, maybe the other things, the, the toxic parts of it, like the, the artificial sweeteners that they use sometimes are made into like formaldehyde and, and other toxins and they need to be flushed out. So in that case, that might be useful. I don't know. Mm. Uh, well, I know, I mean, water, sometimes uh, water curbs hunger cravings as well, because when you think you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. So it's always good to have a lot of water. Uh, but yeah. So I would think that's, that's better than, you know, better than drinking four glasses of uh, sugar-free soda as opposed to one, one soda and three waters, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's good. Um, Timothy follows up and he just said that monitor he mentioned, the Libre, uh, is, he doesn't have to prick his fingers anymore. So that's good. Yeah. So that's something to look into. Um, okay. Bryant has a question. Ah, fasting. Can fasting from food for a week or even 21 days help or hurt diabetics? Um, yes. That's the short answer. Um, okay, so um, with type two diabetes, uh, the problem is too much. And it's too much of everything, too much fat, too much sugar, too much insulin, too much leptin, uh, too much adiponectin, uh, too much of every possible thing that you can think of uh, is, is too much. So if you think about that, you go, well, the cure is, uh, is, to le is less. Less of what? Well, less of everything. And fasting is about as less as you can get. So, um, so I have had people cure their diabetes in 30 days of fasting. Um, I, I've, I've seen more than one. I've had somebody do water fast for 30 days. I had somebody else do a bone broth cleanse for 30 days. And um, in both cases, they're completely uh, diabetes free. They're, they're, um, blood sugars are normal. They're all their tests, insulin, leptin, all the tests are normal, uh, back in the normal range and uh, no longer in the diabetes range. So, uh, so the answer is, yeah, fasting works great. Um, but can it hurt? Yes, you could, you have to be really careful. Uh, we had one woman um, pass out. She stood up too fast when she was fasting and she passed out and broke a tooth out. Uh, and there was, um, uh, and I've had a couple of people uh, say that they've passed out, uh, like by getting up too fast. So you have to be um, just careful while you're fasting. Um, a lot of uh, people, when they fast that long, they do a medically supervised fast. So they, there are fasting centers around the country. There's like four or five of them. One in Northern California, one in Arizona, and there's one in Texas. Um, on the west coast and there may be more on the east coast where where people go and all they do is sit around all day and not eat <laughs> that's their they're doing a medically supervised fast um so the answer the, the answer to the question is yes it will cure diabetes uh, or reverse diabetes completely um and then the 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 longer answer is uh just be careful with that because uh, and not eating uh, causes a whole bunch of changes to happen. You get hypoglycemia and uh, it changes your fluid so you, you can get uh, dehydration, um, those kinds of things. Yeah, I think it's important to have like the key electrolytes like mag magnesium, potassium, sodium, I believe are the three, uh, did I say calcium? Like you should probably yeah. supplement those as well, right? Just to kind of keep your, yeah. Yeah, I, I should think so. And if you're going to drink water or um, that's that's the advantage of broth. The, the bone broth cleanse has calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, uh, and it's got everything in it. So that's that, that's one thing. It actually has protein, too, which is kind of important. And you don't burn all your protein while you're fasting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> OK, a couple more questions and we're going to wrap up for uh, for today's webinar. And uh, like we said, this is our <laughs> final one of the year. So take a break for the holidays here. Um, so is sparkling water uh, a good substitute for soda? Grace likes the fizz. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give an unqualified yes because she said substitute. 
Mm. Uh, and, and if it's substituting for soda, definitely, because it doesn't have flavor or anything. Mm. Now, it, it's, it's not the same as water, but you know what? It's fine. Yeah. You yeah. might as well have the fizz. <laughs> have the fizz, Grace. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Pam. Hi, Pam. How much of a role does glyphosate play in diabetes? Oh, that's interesting. Um, glyphosate is Roundup. Uh, the brand name is Roundup. Um, it is a chelating agent that uh, chelates uh, magnesium especially. Um, and uh, it is uh, quite toxic. Um, and uh, so what many people are deficient in certain minerals, and this chelating agent can contribute to diabetes by removing the chromium, vanadium, magnesium that are necessary for energy production. Uh, zinc is also really important in there. Uh, and so as to whether there's a cause and effect relationship or, or even a, uh, an association, I don't know of one. In the research I've done on glyphosate, I haven't seen a specific cause and effect. Uh, but um, it, I, I just think of the, the mechanism of action of the toxin and what it does, and it could definitely affect diabetes. Okay, I'm just looking something up here. Um, we promoted, a friend of mine has this product called Brock Elite. And so what this is, is it's got sulforaphane in it. Sulforaphane uh, is the key ingredient in broccoli. Uh, and there's a direct connection to this um, helping with the glyphosate issue. And we sent an email about it. Uh, the subject line, if you have our emails, you can maybe search your emails. It's called, uh, the subject line was, she died so that you may live. And <clears throat> my friend Dave, his wife passed away a couple years ago. Uh, but in, in her battle to live, they came across this. Um, this product or they created this product he partnered with uh, scientists and um so if you want to look into that i'm gonna uh we'll be promoting that again and and dr saunders will talk more about that um, but this i just wanted to bring that up because this specifically addresses glyphosate and talks about that in their in their messaging so um okay uh we had a question about whether there's a home test for insulin, I think you have to go, I don't know if you can do a home test for insulin, can you? No, I don't think so. I, I, you have to go to some reference lab, have, have a lab do it. Yeah. No. Many states, you can walk into a lab and get a test done. You don't have to have it ordered by a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so, some states require, like New York, I know requires that you have a physician to sign it. And then sometimes labs, will will say no we won't do the test unless a doctor orders it because we don't want to be responsible for it we want the doctor to be responsible for the results the test results yeah. so uh so it's, so that's more of just a shifting responsibility kind of thing um but more and more there are uh labs popping up at least in california where uh there are walk-in labs where people can just go in and get them done yeah Okay, so um, Leslie, I think uh, someone else had a question about fasting, but I think we'll post that. Um, if we can post the YouTube video on our Facebook channel, uh, put it both on, the, on our Barton Publishing uh, and the 610 Reset. So we have a Facebook channel called 610 Reset, and that is all about going to bed at 10 o'clock on an empty stomach, which means you stop eating by 6 o'clock normally. And uh, if you want to join that Facebook group, we've been sharing numbers and encouragement and a little bit of accountability and just kind of building a community there. So, um, Leslie, if you could just share and tell us quick, like how, how do people join the 610 reset Facebook challenge? Okay. So she just posted a link in the chat. You just click on that. And then I think you just uh, can join the group. And, uh, and then inside that group, we're going to post an answer to uh, our, the YouTube video that we did, which was all about fasting. So Bonnie, that, that's how we're going to answer your question today about fasting, because it's really good um, uh, information that Dr. Saunders shared there. So uh, with that, we're going to wrap up. We're going to say uh, goodbye to all of you for 2019, at least on these webinars. And we'll see you on Facebook as well. But 
I uh, wanted to wish you and your families a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, whatever it is that you're celebrating this time of year. Uh, for me, I've got the Christmas tree upstairs and got my boys coming home from college, so we're looking forward to spending time together. We've been playing a game together every day, so uh, I usually have been losing. Last Yesterday, we played the bop it game, that thing that makes noise and you have to bop it or spin it or twist it and all that. Man, that, uh, that can cause uh, cortisol to rise, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Stressful games. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, all right. Well, thanks, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll see you on January 7th. And uh, really appreciate you guys. Dr. Saunders, thank you. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Um, okay. And, Dr. Saunders, I wanted to let you know, I got a Christmas present coming to your house. But it's coming in two separate deliveries. And so oh. I think you're getting one today. And the other one is going to be probably delivered when you're back in utah so you have to wait till you get back to get the follow-up ah, darn <laughs> i can't stand the suspense <laughs> well the the gift the first one that you get today is going to be a dead giveaway on what the second one is so i'll just leave, leave uh, okay. it that, so. <laughs> all uh, right okay. yeah okay thanks everyone